I'm Tracy from Vision Dynamics and I want to congratulate you on the purchase of your Optilic Clearview video magnifier and today I'm going to go over um, the simplicity of how to use it. So hopefully we've come in and installed it or it's been delivered and it's set up for you and um, so this is a great opportunity to just get started. Uh, first you're going to find it's a nice simple display right on your tray. That's where all the buttons are for you to operate your video magnifiers, right on the tray itself. So once everything is plugged in and you're ready to go, you're going to find just above the main dial on the tray a smaller round button that's very smooth. That's what you're going to press in and hold for just a couple of seconds to turn it on. You're going to hear that little motor go ah, and that's a good sign and it's going to take a few seconds to warm up. You've got a, uh, some words coming up on the screen. The light has turned on on your tray and we're ready to go. Now you're going to be able to pull your tray closer to you. I have a book here on the tray. Again, I'm just going to remind you, you can put anything on that tray. You can put books, your mail, photographs, cards, birthday cards, prescription bottles, um, uh, you know, brownie boxes, recipe books, absolutely anything. Your hands, artwork, anything can go on that tray. You can put your nails and do your nails underneath here. This camera is going to work for you like your eyes and on your display you'll have whatever you put underneath here. Um, I always recommend to my customers that they start with simple things, things you're familiar with, newsletters, your familiar newspaper, um, things, your favorite crossword, maybe you haven't been able to do it for a while, um, your crossword puzzle. Put things underneath there that you enjoy, photographs you haven't been able to look at for a while. Start simple, really enjoy getting used to moving the tray around as you look at those photographs or your favorite book. Um, don't start with materials that you're not familiar with because as you're learning the device you want something, oh yes I know that you know the photograph is always at the top left hand corner so then you can practice how to get to the top left hand corner moving to the right because you know what's going to be over there and you know you've succeeded because you have found what you're looking for it's a lot easier when it's material that you're familiar with and then move on to other things and we'll also talk about that in a minute with the writing aspect of using your video magnifier as well but so far right now you've got it on that's a good sign now uh, in the front you've got your main dial I call it a stove dial. It operates very similarly to a stove dial. Turning the outside rubberized part of that dial is going to make your print larger and smaller. And once you get it situated, you know, it may be different from this print to the next print that you put underneath there because that's going to depend on what size the print is to begin with um, each time you change from going from a book say to the newspaper so you know you want to become familiar with adjusting the size of the print because you'll be doing some adjusting as you move from print size to print size. Now the center of that dial is the mode button. That you press down in the center and that's going to change your color combinations. Right now we're in color. I always, if I'm not sure because I'm looking at something black and white, I'll stick my hand underneath there and I can see my skin tone. So I'll say, oh yes, I'm in color. So I'm going to press it and now I'm in what we call high contrast black and white and then I'm going to press it one more time and that's going to reverse it for me. Now it's going to be white on black. And again, no matter what color mode you're in, you can change the print size to as large as you need it as you're going along. And then I'll bring it back to color. And actually I'm going to push it one more time and bring it into high contrast black on white. And that's I'd say the most common um, color contrast or color mode that our customers use. They like the black on white. I have to say though, with newsprint, white on black is very popular because it tends to clean up the background of the newspaper. Newspaper is very poor quality paper, very grainy. People tend to try the white on black with newspaper because it seems to clean up the background a little bit. So you may want to try that um, as you're practicing. But on average, um, when they're reading books, magazines, the white on black is very popular. Okay, and now on the tray, up to the top right hand corner, there's a panel that you can slide to the left that covers a series of three buttons. 
And those three buttons, um, one has a moon on it, the next one has a sun, and the third one all the way to the right has a pencil on it. And the first two, the moon and the sun, affect the shading. So we're in color mode right now, but maybe you're gonna get a lot of sunlight in a room or um, something like that where it's gonna affect what you're seeing on the screen. So you can adjust the shading on it while still staying in color mode or black on white or white on black. So I'm gonna hold down the moon one, which is closest to me, and you're gonna see how the, the line is gonna slide across and the image on the screen got darker. Now if I move into the middle button, the next button over to the right, that's your sun. That's gonna brighten up the image and you can see now how the screen is getting brighter and brighter and that line just glided all the way to the right. So again, moon and sun brighten and darken the image on your screen. It's not gonna change your color combination. It's just gonna make it brighter or darker. I'm just gonna bring it back to the middle a little bit. Um, it's not gonna change your color combination. It's just gonna affect the shading on the screen. Now the pencil all the way to the right, that's gonna lock your focus. What that means is right now, if I stick my hand underneath there, I'll make the screen a little bit smaller. Anything closest to the camera is what the camera is going to focus on. So now it's going to focus on my hand. I'm going to take it away. Now it's going to focus on the paper. If I put a prescription bottle underneath here, it would focus on the prescription bottle. The focus is going to keep changing based on what's closest to the camera. Some people notice when they're writing that they can see the focus changing. It's following the pencil in their hand and not staying focused on the paper. So what you can do is press that pencil button, that's the focus lock. You know it's on because the light is gonna turn on inside the, um, the stove dial, that's main um, button here on the tray, the one that we turn to make the, fo the uh, print larger or smaller. There's gonna be a red circle that lights up. That's gonna tell you the focus lock is on. So what's gonna happen now is the focus is gonna stay locked on the paper. It's not gonna try to focus on my hand or the pencil. So that way I can go ahead and start writing without seeing the focus changing. And then when I wanna shut that off, I just press that uh, pencil button in again, the one with the pencil picture all the way to the right, and the light will turn off on the dial. And we're back to autofocus, meaning that it'll focus on whatever's closest to the camera. Some people are very aware of that focus changing and like that focus lock. Others won't notice the focus changing, so you can forget all about it. If you're in a room that doesn't get a lot of sunlight or have, you're needing to change the shading at all, those things don't need to happen much. You can just slide that panel over and never be concerned about those buttons. It also just protects them from accidentally getting pressed um, by someone who's not familiar with the video magnifier or if you're leaning over here, you're not gonna accidentally press it so you can just cover them up and keep them protected. The last button to be concerned about with your clear view is the um, automatic brake lock. And that's found just in front of the dial underneath the tray. There's a flat little bar that you pinch. You're going to take your thumb and your pointer finger and pinch it and you can hear that lock. Now the tray is locked. That's great for when you are writing or maybe looking at a rounded item, um, a can or something. You don't want your tray moving underneath as you're turning it. You can also pinch it again and now the lock is free to, or the tray is free to move around again so you can navigate around your material. So again, pinch it. It's, again, it's just a flat little bar underneath the tray. Pinch it to lock. Pinch it again to unlock. And those are the buttons found on your Clearview Video Magnifier by Optilec. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call us at 203. 271-1944. Um, you can also uh, visit us on our website, visiondynamics.com, for any other needs you may have in low vision or blindness products. Thank you for watching.